Hey guys, I just wanted to show off a demo on how to create a little vi virtual private cloud using PowerShell and CLI together. There's a little trick in here that is really remarkable that makes things so easy, and that's basically the way that PowerShell uh, turns uh, JSON into an object, and then you could directly use those objects in, in command lines, and it makes things so nice and clean. So uh, the first uh, attempt at making this video, I don't have any VPCs right now, um, just to show you that, but the first attempt, uh, the video was too long, and I just really want to show off that, you know, how easy it is. This is basically uh, 23 commands that make this, uh, and I'll go through it really quickly. First section is making the virtual private cloud in the, uh, in the internet gateway that's uh, here. Basically, uh, these variables here in my IP, obviously this is open to all. You'd put in your IP, your IP-32. I set it to this so it would work for this demo. Key pair, that is something that you make uh, before. The AMI, that is something you find out, uh, you know, when you're making an instance. But basically, over here, this is all the stuff you have to do before this. Uh, sign up to AWS, that involves a credit card, but you're not you know, paying uh, that much. Um, make a key pair in the EC2 section. This makes your SSH keys to get in, and you download the PEM file for that. It's uh, on your own computer if you're using Windows 10, install PowerShell 7. Uh, we're going to use PowerShell's SSH to, uh, to test it. Uh, I used PuTTY for years, but now that PowerShell uh, hosts their own SSH that they took from open SSH. It's really nice. And plus, it's actually identical to the Linux documentation. So deduplicating things is always nice. Uh, install AWS CLI for Windows. This isn't a, uh, a command line. It's not like PowerShell or command or bash or KSH or something. This is literally just a command. And then you put things after it. That's how it works. Uh, so we'll literally be using PowerShell and AWS CLI at the same time because the actual base command line is PowerShell. Uh, make a user in the IAM section with uh, dev admin privileges. This is the credentials for the AWS CLI. So uh, this is separate from this. This is uh, to control stuff in Amazon Web Services and this is to control stuff in your virtual instances. Um, and this is how to do that. You copy the key and passcode, blah, blah, blah. And then you could test it uh, after you've set all that up. Um, uh, run AWS configure. That is the command line to, to input the username and password you'll get from uh, the IAM. So that's what that is. Uh, test with AWS EC2 describe VPCS. This is kind of like, you know, like hitting DIR or LS just to see that it works. So I'm just putting it in there. And this is just asking to uh, list what virtual private clouds I have. And I don't have anything, it's clean. So uh, right now I'm in North Virginia. So we'll start with this. Um, clear, there's some variables uh, and I'll explain them when we get to them. VPC, create the VPC, the virtual private cloud with the, this is the scope, this is the uh, the giant IP address we'll use to encapsulate all the subnets. Whenever you see this, create tags. Uh, this is just naming things. They're not necessary, but I'm a guy. I like to keep things neat and uh, and named correctly. So it's easy. As soon as, if somebody else looks at it, they'll know exactly what's happening. That's really what you're doing. And you're making it easy on yourself also because I'll program this uh, today. Then three years later, I'll look at it and then I'll forget I ever even did this. So really, I'm... I'm uh, programming this for myself in the tomorrow days. So there we go. Um, gateway, internet gateway, you create it, and then you attach, well, you create it, then you name it, and then you attach it to the VPC. So this is like attaching your cable modem to your base like network right there. Um, subnet A, uh, you're creating the subnet with this. And notice, and here's the, the handy trick, I should have explained this before, that this is the actual command, and this outputs JSON. Like, as if we see here, we could recognize this as JSON. Well, PowerShell has a handy thing where you could capture that text out 
and you could put it into a variable. But on top of that, that variable, if it's in JSON form, you could convert it into an object. So there's a lot of things happening here. You're running an AWS command. It's outputting, uh, let's assume that this was like a text file. You know, this is a text file. Then we're taking that text file and turning it into an object. Then we're casting that object into this variable. Uh, there's a lot of stuff happening here, but it's really minimized. And that's what's making this look so neat. So right after that, this is a, an object. We can see that uh, there are different branches in there. There's VPC and VPC ID. This equals a string, and that string is going to be like VPC dash one two three four or something like that. And it's really handy because this is going to be dynamic. Every time you make a VPC, it's going to give you a new serial number or something. So this uh, and as we can see, this is really easy to read. You know. We know what a VPC is. We, we could guess what a VPC ID is. It's, you know, there we go. Gateway. So uh, same thing. You create the gateway with this. You're using the command to create it. It's going to output JSON. We're going to put that JSON and convert it into an object. And now we're casting that object into the variable gateway. Now I'm renaming it. The gateway, the internet gateway is the first uh, branch. The second, uh, you know, the, the sub branch of that is internet gateway ID. And so there we go. That's pointing to the resource. This is the resource name. What do I want to do? I want to add a tag. Uh, the, ta the, the key is the name and the value is this. I named it one public IGW, the internet gateway. So every time you see this, I'm just labeling stuff. So I'm just going to pretty much skip over that now. Um, attach the Internet Gateway to the VPC. So attach Internet Gateway, which Internet Gateway? This Internet Gateway. Again, I'm using the uh, object and all that to which VPC? This VPC. Okay, now, so we've gotten past this, uh, these two objects here created this, created this, created the relationship right there. So those one, two, three, those three objects. Now I'm going to go to a public subnet, create the subnet with this. Again, there's a command. Which VPC do, wanna, do I want to create the subnet in? Obviously, you know this. This gets tiresome, but it's very easy to read. And you're going to see this throughout the whole uh, video. Um, the cider block there, convert, blah, 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 name. Now I'm creating a route create the route table in which VPC, this one, cast all that object information to that variable, uh, rename, uh, associate the subnet to the route. So when you make a route, you have to include this blue subnet into this green route table. So which route table do I want? I want route table A, because that's what I named it. I named it route A, and that's the idea. Um, Create tags. Oh, okay, sorry, I'm renaming there. Uh, this one, associate route table, which route? This one, route A, which I just created, to which subnet? To subnet A, which I created right before that. So it creates a little entry, and to me, this is really easy to understand. I really like how PowerShell is, is working so well with AWS CLI, and especially with JSON, and you just turn it into an object on the fly. Um, same thing with here. Uh, you're creating a uh, another route. Uh, let's let's see. Create. Oh, I'm sorry. Uh, yes, you are creating another route because you've attached this IGW to the virtual private cloud. That's great. But now we have to make this little arrow. How do we do that? And in the route table, you would actually uh, uh, point to the I to the IGW. Which IGW? This IGW with the gateway and that and that. And then uh, what is it pointing to? It's pointing to all of the internet. So that's open to all the internet. And uh, that's it. And which route table are you editing? Route table A right there. So there's actually uh, two variables we're looking at. The variable we're looking at is this gateway variable and this route table variable. Uh, the second uh, subnet is simpler. It's identical, except there is no uh, IGW. Uh, the difference between public and private is that there's no internet in a private. There's internet in the public. So um, that's there. 
So create subnet, uh, create the route table, and then we're going to include the route table. We're going to put this blue subnet associated with this green route table number two. Okay, so create search, security groups. Security groups are the red boxes, and that's what your instance is kind of like they're placed in to, uh, you know, to create a firewall type of situation. Every instance uh, has to have a security group. So, uh, and if it doesn't, it'll just create one for you. So uh, we create the security group uh, public. Uh, this public one allows uh, port 22 SSH to the developer IP. I would say have this all open to the internet. Um, private security group, there we go. This one allows uh, port 22 from this subnet, 10.1.0.1.0. .1 .10 That's what I uh, designated that as. All right, um, and there we go. And this one also authorizes uh, ping ICMP traffic. Uh, so it, if it comes from here, it will allow it, and it will allow, uh, allow it to go back. Just make sure you have your, um, your NACL, which I don't have open on that. Um, and finally, after you make the security group, you can make the instances inside of them. EC2, run instances, the AMI, the AMI number here, you can get that from the, the AWS select what OS you want. So this could be a Windows or it could be a Linux. I chose Linux, uh, Linux uh, AM, Amazon Linux too, because hey, it works. Um, so there. How many of them? One instance types, T2 micro, key name, the key pair name. That's uh, something I didn't go over. Security group ID. Notice how this uh, came in handy again with this group A, and I'm just referencing it. And then which subnet? Again, you know, I don't have to, like, kind of create files or create new variables. Uh, I'm very easily just using these same names, and it comes in... in uh, a huge benefit when you're making more complex networks uh, even for this this made this super simple and the same thing for EC uh, instance 2 the only difference is that uh, one is in subnet uh, 1 one is in subnet 2 I named it subnet A and B here but that's how it is uh, and the, uh, the public uh, uh, the public one is going to have an, a public IP so associate public IP the second one is uh, not going to be open to the public. Even if you associate a public, it won't even have access to get to the internet. But, you know, just to keep, keep things cleaner, you know, I know associate IP, that kind of thing. Convert to JSON, and that's going to, you know, very nicely, we're actually going to see the name of these instances uh, on the command line. So we'll notice that uh, EC2 instance, and then under the branches are instances, and then instance ID is the final branch, the final variable. So uh, let's go ahead and run this. So I named it setup. While that's happening, I'm going to uh, monitor it here. This just created that VPC. And now we're gonna look at the internet gateways. It just created this internet gateway, but notice it's detached. It's attaching the internet gateway. That went pretty fast. Now it's attached. Now it's creating subnets. Now we have the first subnet there, and we're going to see uh, it's going to create the route table for the uh, for that subnet. So now it's going to create the now it's going to create the associations in that route table. So sorry, uh, and it named it. So that's literally what we just created with the script local. And that was the gateway we just created, and it linked it in there. All cool. So it's creating the private subnet now. We can see it private. Oh, yeah, we could cheat and go route tables. Route table uh, was already associated to it, and there we go. So now what this is doing is creating security groups, and I did name them uh, public and private. So uh, public, if we go here into the inbound, you're gonna see SSH to everyone. Uh, try to make this your, your personal IP, you know, just to be more secure, just common sense. You'll notice in this one, this is actually pointing to the internal network. And this uh, is the uh, IP uh, for, or ICMP stuff. 
So now that that's done, and I've never seen a demo like this done, that's why I'm doing it. Uh, let's go ahead and log in. So I already have my key here, and this is PowerShell uh, 7, so SSH, I, the name of that. I hit tab just to autofill that. EC2 minus user at, and I don't know the IP address, <laughs> so I'm going to go and get it. And you'll notice one has a public and one doesn't, and that's really handy because sometimes the interface here isn't very descriptive of what it, where it is or whatnot. And that, well, that helps, but that's all the way in the end. So there we go. I'm going to refresh. Okay, it's running. Right click to input that, enter. So the first time it's going to ask you, and you have to type out yes. There we go. So I'm actually uh, in the, uh, the instance we just created. And let's go ahead and prove that I can uh, talk to the other non-public instance. So uh, I know I screwed up on the ICMP, uh, so I'm just going to SSH into it. That's right. Uh, in order to SSH in into it, I have to put the key. And that's I don't have that. So OK, I'm not going to be able to do it. <laughs> but I'm just going to type it in anyway. Right, so I can access it. Oh, there we go. So it's saying permission denied, but it you could see that it had a dialogue. So it did, it was able to touch uh, uh, the, the private, but since I didn't uh, put the key in the public, the PEM file, uh, you know, and that would kind of reveal my PM key. I don't want to do that, but that's basically it. Uh, so if you have any questions, go ahead and put them in the comments. Thanks.